What's up everybody, Average Joe here. So today's video, we're gonna be setting up a battery backup system with a critical loads panel. We're gonna be using two EcoFlow Delta Pros, one double voltage hub, and of course the ProTrans 2 generator transfer switch or critical loads panel. This is gonna be a step-by-step -step guide, so let's get to it. All right, so everything out of the box right here. This is the Reliance ProTran 2 generator transfer switch or critical loads panel. Again, this is from EcoFlow. Their model number is 306A-Eco. All right, so you can do a maximum of 7,500 watts with here. All right, so underneath the panel, right up here on the top, we have two meters, basically L1 and L2, how many watts you're running on each leg. Right below that are all of your circuits. You got your 240 volt circuit right here and then you have four 120 volt circuits right here if you didn't want 240 volts you can actually unscrew this and back out the little bar so you can basically have two more 120 volt circuits and then of course right down here you have four 15 amp circuit breakers one for each switch right up here and then you have a 20 amp double pull circuit breaker for your 20 amp appliance if you flip the switch up that means you're on generator or battery power or backup power. Obviously the center is off. And then if you leave it down, that's basically grid or pass through mode. So if you have a storm or something coming in, you just wanna automatically go to backup power. You just come down to wherever you have the panel installed and flip that up to generator power. Out of the bottom of the box, you have all of your wiring. Again, everything's pre-wired except for the plug right up here, which we're gonna do in a couple of minutes. You have your ground wire, a shared neutral you're going to have six black wires and six red wires and there is a little sticker on here it says important connect red wire leads to branch circuit breakers all right all of these red wires are going to be connected directly to the circuit breakers inside of your panel all right and then for the black wires you're going to be connecting these to the actual circuits, all right? Another really cool thing that makes this super easy is every single wire has an A, B, C, D, E, or F on it, all right? So we're gonna have that on the red, and then we're gonna also have that on the black. And that matches up to each one of the circuit breakers up here on the box. And also down here, you can see each one is L1, L2, L1, L2, L1, and L2. And then it also came with everything right here inside the box as well. So it came with a three quarter inch flexible conduit. This is probably 16 to 18 inches long. It came with a manual right over there. Came with a couple of squeeze connectors right here. It came with a L14-30, 30 amp plug right here. It came with an extra ground wire, which is gonna connect up to our socket right here. Came with some wiring instructions on how to wire that up. And then a couple of stickers right over here. This kit also came with their double voltage hub. Basically, you need this if you want to do 240 volts split phase, all right? And then finally, it came with their heavy-duty 10-gauge generator cable right here. The only thing I did notice that it did not come with is your wire nuts or your wire connections so we can connect these to our loads. All right, so make sure you get some of those before you start. All right, now we're back at the circuit breaker panels. If you're not comfortable with doing wiring or electricity or anything like that, because we are gonna be getting inside the electrical panels, make sure you hire a licensed electrician or maybe just have your uncle do it. All right, now that that's out of the way, the next thing you wanna do is figure out exactly which circuit or what you wanna power or back up. The number one thing for me is losing heat in the wintertime. So number one for me is the furnace. Number two is gonna be my refrigerator because because I don't want to lose any food. Maybe we just went to the store. I don't want to lose any of that stuff. The next one is going to be my TV room because that has, well, entertainment, TV, lights, outlets, my cable modem, and all the fun stuff. And then finally, fourth is going to be my little shop area down here where I do most of my work, my computer work, you know, all of my video type of work. And then for my 240 volt load is in this box over here. This is my, my big stuff. We're just going to be doing my dryer for the example today. All right, I guess if you had a well pump or something really important that's 240 volts, 
you could do that. All right, now that you have those written down, the next thing we're gonna do is figure out where you're gonna put your critical loads panel. I'm gonna be mounting mine right over here, so that's what we're gonna do next, is basically hold it up and figure out exactly where we're gonna put it. Because you wanna be able to line up that flexible conduit with one of the knockouts on the side of the panel. And obviously I'm gonna be going into some cinder block here, so I'm gonna have to get some masonry drill bits to drill through that, and I'll probably just use some tap cons to mount my box. If you're going into drywall or wood or whatever, you got over here you know just use the appropriate screws because it didn't come with any of that stuff all right let's get to it all right i know you can see exactly what i'm doing over here basically i'm just lining everything up i'm going to make sure my squeeze connector down here that's going to hold the conduit is going to line up with one of the knockouts over here and once i get that lined up i'm just going to mark my holes All right, there we go. Got the critical loads panel mounted to the wall. Next thing we can do is mount that plug to these wires and of course install that plate. So actually what goes on first is the plate. We'll do that real quick and we'll pull our wires through there. All right, so we're just gonna start with our ground, which is green and that goes to G. Next one I have right here is Y for red. Next one for me is white, and that is a W. And then finally, black for X. Then we can just install the socket right here with the three screws. And there we go. Now we have our 240 volt socket installed. All right, now that this is mounted to the wall, next thing we're gonna do is take off the cover to the circuit breaker panel. So first thing you wanna do, obviously, is shut off the power so you don't electrocute yourself, all right? All right, next thing we're gonna be doing is punching out one of the knockouts. Basically, you wanna punch out the one that you had previously lined up with the transfer switch. And if you're going into the multi-sized hole like I am, they kinda of go both ways. So the center one goes in, and then the small ring after that punches out. Just take a screwdriver and pop it in. All right, so there you go. There's one knockout, and I need to get a three-quarter, so I'm gonna be popping out the next ring right here. We'll just take some needle nose pliers and bend those closer together. And there we go. Now we have our three quarter inch hole. All right, next thing we're gonna do is install the flexible conduit. All right, so depending on how your installation is, you might be able to get away with using this whole thing, you know, how far away you are, etc. Obviously mine's pretty close, so I'm gonna have to cut mine down. Mark mine probably right about here and then just cut it off. All right, I got my conduit cut right here. And if you notice, they do have these plastic inserts right here. That's basically so you don't cut up your wires. So if you did cut yours, make sure you install that plastic insert so you don't booger up the ends of your wires, okay? All right, next part could be a little tricky. Basically, we have to get all of our wires through our piece of flexible conduit so we can route it over to the circuit breaker panel. All right, next part, we're gonna be putting it into the circuit breaker panel. So just choose whatever clamp style fitting you're gonna be using. I'm gonna be using the straight one. Go ahead and remove the jam nut because we'll be setting that on the inside and we'll go ahead and fish our wires through this as well. All right, next thing to do is fish the wires into the circuit breaker panel. And once we do get it in there, then we can put the jam nut over the wires. and then tighten down the jam nut. All right, next we gotta do is put the cover back on to cover up these wires. All right, now we're gonna start connecting all the wires and all the circuit breakers and all of that kind of fun stuff. The first thing we're gonna do always is connect the ground. If you're going into a sub panel, just like I'm doing, you're gonna have a separate ground bar and a separate neutral bar, all right? If you're going into a main panel, your neutral and ground are already connected. So since this is a sub panel, mine are separated. So the green wire, which is the ground wire, is gonna go over to this ground bar over here. And then the shared neutral right here is gonna go to the neutral bar right over here. So first thing I'm gonna do is just get a rough length of how high I need to go or where I need to go. And then I'm just going to cut the wire and install it. Snip. I'm gonna to try to fish this all the way behind all these wires back here. Next is the neutral snip. 
All right, now I'm going to give you a quick little example of how to wire the 240 volt circuit breaker. All right, so just imagine that this is already installed over here and you have, let's say, a well pump already installed. Okay, so basically what we're going to do is remove the well pump from here. Over here on the panel, you got circuit A and B. So basically you're going to find A and B on the wiring, okay? So right here we have A, right here we have B. Okay, so we're gonna grab the two red wires. We're gonna wire those directly to the circuit breaker. Then the two black wires, A and B, we are going to, well obviously strip these back a little bit and then wire nut these onto the well pump. All right, that's how you wire a 240 volt circuit. All the 120 volt circuits are gonna be exactly the same. However, it's just gonna be one circuit breaker. So what you need to do next is just grab a matched pair. All right, so this one is letter E. So that's gonna be circuit breaker E on the critical loads panel. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. So find your device or room that you would like to power and let's get that wired up. So the next one we're gonna do is my refrigerator and that is spot 15 right here. So we're gonna shut that off. I'm gonna strip these back real quick so I don't forget. I'm gonna back out circuit 15. The wire that we pulled off that's going to go to my refrigerator, we're going to take the black wire and we're going to wire nut these two together just like that. We'll probably do some wire management later. And then the other side, which is the red, is going to go right into the circuit breaker. All right, there you go. That was easy enough. Now we're going to move on to the next one. So my next one is circuit breaker 21. Snip on to the next. So that's actually circuit breaker 23. Snip. Snip. All right, there we go. Got all four circuits wired in. And just to show you, we got all the red wires right here going to the circuit breaker. And then the wire that we pulled off goes to the load. All right, after you put your circuit breaker covers back on, we can come over here and flip on all of these circuit breakers, and then we're gonna move the switches to line mode or grid mode for now. And then once we roll over the EcoFlow deltas, we're gonna transfer it over to backup power. All right, this is for video purposes only. Do not do this. So unfortunately, the wires that come from the transfer switch won't reach you know, if I had to route it over here to my 240 volt panel. So temporarily, I just routed everything over to the device right out here. Earlier I said we were gonna be doing the dryer for this video, however, I decided against that. I figured we'd go right for the big guns and go right for my four ton air conditioning. I know a lot of people lose power when it's hot out and they wanna be able to use their air conditioning. So again, four ton air conditioning draws a ton of power on startup. I don't know if the eco flows are gonna be able to do it. However, I do have a soft start on there, which might allow us to do it. If you're not familiar with the soft start, basically it just lowers the startup current so you can run stuff off of backup power generators and stuff like that. So fingers crossed it might work. All right, so next thing we can do is we can bring over the EcoFlow Deltas, plug everything in and try it out. All right, we'll bring these over and we will stagger them just a little bit so we can get in that double voltage hub. All right, now we're gonna need the double voltage hub and the generator cord. All right, and on each side of the Delta Pros, you have this little tiny door right here. We need to open that up, and that's where we're gonna plug in our double voltage hub. All right, here's one of the plugs for the double voltage hub, and it can only go in one way. You have this little indentation right here, and when you wanna pull it out, there's a release button right here. So we'll go ahead and plug these in. Once we plug it in, you'll see it show up on the screen right over here where we can see we're connected. And again, you can see we're connected right over here. We can push the power button on the double voltage hub. All right, if you look on the screen right here, you can see it says 60 Hertz right here. And you can also see it on this one right here. All right, now we can plug our generator cable right into the double voltage hub. And again, this only goes one way. Give it a little twist. 
And now we take the other end and plug it right into the socket right here. And just FYI, these are not live, okay? It only becomes live once you plug it in. All right, so again, this only goes in one way. So you plug it in and then give it a little twist. That just prevents it from being pulled out or knocked out. Boom, there you go. You are now ready for the next power outage. So all you need to do from here is flip it up to generator or backup power and you'll be running off the EcoFlow deltas. Should we give that a try? All right, here we go. We're just gonna go ahead and flip it over. All right, now we're running off of the EcoFlow Deltas. And another really cool thing, if you're not familiar, these do come with an app that you could download for Android or iOS. So you don't have to come down here and check on them. You can check on them right from the couch. So if we go ahead and simulate that we're sitting on the couch checking in, you can see Delta Pro 1 and Delta Pro 2. We'll just go ahead and click on. All right, so on the main screen, if you look up on the top right, you can see we're drawing 244 watts. We're still sitting at 100%, obviously, because we just plugged it in and started running everything from it. And then right underneath that, it does show you have 13 hours and four minutes remaining. All right, so that's pretty cool. And you can do some other cool different things with this. All right, so if we back out and click on Delta Pro 2, on this one, you can see we're doing 185 watts, obviously still 100%. And we got basically 18 hours of runtime left on here. All right, well, there you go. Super easy. Now you're prepared for the next power outage, hurricane, ice storm, you know, the next guy that runs into the utility pole, you're gonna have power for days. Well, for me, it's probably going to be maybe 17 hours. But anyway, if you can serve, you could last a quite a long time. All right, enough of that. Let's see if we can start that four ton air conditioning. All right, here we go. Is it going to do it? It's running. It's running right now. Holy crap, it did it. All right, so if you have a soft start on your four ton air conditioning, you can run it from the Delta Pros. Holy crap. All right, so if we look at the screen here, this one's only drawing 1.43 kilowatt. Let me click on the other one. This one is, oh, it's only drawing 1.9. So easy, easy peasy, but it does look like we only have about an hour and 49 minutes of runtime on this one. This one's drawing a little bit less, so we have two hours and 27 minutes of runtime. So there you go. Pretty damn impressive. If you ask me, I would say that's fan freaking tastic. Holy crap. I was not expecting that at all. All right, so keep in mind, we're not only powering my air conditioning and the furnace fan, we're powering my little shop over there two refrigerators and my TV room. You know, TV room's only got a couple lights, routers and modems on it turned on right now. So this is pretty damn awesome. I was just 100% not expecting the air conditioning to turn on. All right, there you go. I don't wanna to waste too much more of your time. We can do more power stuff in another video. Basically, I just wanted to show you how easy it was to install one of these transfer switches or critical loads panel. Anybody thought this video was helpful, it'd be appreciative if you smash that like button. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.